Hi, Ropers. I'm here to give a little how-to video on how uh, I uh, attach these vintage needleworks that you come across at yard sales or flea markets that people have done uh, ages ago. And uh, I have a collection of them. This is what they look like. There's one. Oops. 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 And here's another one. And here's another one. They were in frames. I took them out. And I've had them for a while. But the rope bowl, I found that the, they work great in the bottom of your rope bowls. So if you have any, or any kind of needlework, actually, uh, this is my way of putting them in the bottom of the bowl. Uh, this one will be background fabric, a cotton fabric, and I'm going to do a little bit of wrapping. Okay, so that's when that one will look like that. And I don't haven't picked out my colors for this one yet. And this one will have this as the wrapping, but I still have to find a nice background cotton fabric from my stash, which is extensive. So I'll find something. So this is what the bowl will look like when it's done. I just used a zigzag. Uh, I, I used a colored thread on this one. You don't have to. You can use uh, the beige thread and a little bit of, of the wrapping of the rope. And that's what the bottom looks like. And that's what the bottom bottom looks like. So this is a pretty good, they, 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 you need, they come out about a 10 inch bottom because these pieces require that much space. I use good old Walmart rope. I think it's now $8 for the 100 feet. And uh, so I, I use that. It gives a nice firm bowl. I use other ropes too, but for these bowls, I like this firm, this firm bowl. So here it is. I'm using it. I'm going to take, get rid of that. And... I started this one because you don't need to see me sewing, sewing, you know, there's a lot of videos that do that. So here's the bottom and it measures eight inches, eight inches round to fit this piece here. Now you can see what I did was I stitched it on the cotton fabric. Now, when I use cotton fabric, I always use a stabilizer on the back, just a thin whatever you have around a stabilizer because the fabric's a little flimsy, the cotton fabrics are, and just helps sew better, and I don't know, it gives a better feel, to, in my opinion. Um, other people don't but use it, but I do. So what I did is um, trimmed, over, trimmed out the oval, you know, took off all that... Uh, outside stuff and then I just zigzag it several times around as you can see and that's what it looks like so it will fit here's the fabric that I used here's going to be the the uh, wrapping I cut some for the wrapping so that's get that out of the way um, I use a glue stick to uh, attach the needlework onto, to stabilize it um, onto the um, cotton fabric so it helps when you're zigzagging. Won't move around. Not necessary, but I do it. So this is, this is the piece we're going to be putting on this little round disc, bottom of the bowl. And so uh, we'll turn it over. And I place my disc, my disc on here and 
because well, you don't need all this extra fabric here. And I just mark it like so. Am I in camera here? Yeah. So you can use, I'm using a marker, you could use a pen, you could use chalk, just, just so you get a mark. And I'm going to put that aside. Close the magic marker up. And then I'm just going to trim this to get rid of the excess fabric, some of it anyway. I trim it just a tiny bit outside of what the mark is. I am not a perfectionist. I'm an abstract collage, outsider art type of fiber artist. I do a lot of things. And perfection is not my thing. I kind of let things speak to me wherever the art wants to go. Of course, this is more of a craft. But still, you have leeway. So, there you go. We don't need these scraps. Dispose of those on the floor. So then you have something like this. And then this goes on top of your... Now, you got to make sure you do the right side because this has to go into your sewing machine and, and this is now upside down. Ask me how I know. So make sure you have it correctly done this way, that it goes through your machine like this. <laughs> and I've done it more than once and I should know better, but... What are you going to do? So, here we go. What I'm going to do is put, press this down on here. Take my glue stick. Glue sticky. You can use any kind of glue stick. I happen to be using these. I like these. And you can either put the glue on here, on your needlework part, or... You can put the glue on your base. This is mainly just to hold it down while you're stitching. A little mushy there. Ooh, must have fuzz or something there. We'll just mash it around. Okay. So remember what I said, make sure your rope is going uh, to the, what is this, the right side. And then you can just place this on as best you can. It's removable. You can take it off and on, off and on until you're happy. So, okay. Keep forgetting I have to keep this under the camera. It's a little awkward here. Um, so, good. It's going to look very, very, very nice. Okay. Now we have way too much still here on the outside. So what I do... Make sure I have it going the right way, yes. What I do is I trim it. A little bit there where the where the rope is loose and then I turn it over and I trim pretty close to the edge of the disc because it does not have to be hardly any fabric here in the edge at all because that needs to get uh, sewn in between the rope 
and so it doesn't show on the bottom of your bowl. But if it shows on the bottom of your bowl, it's not, not that terrible. So, here we go. I hope everyone had a nice holiday. I've been spending this week uh, cleaning up my studio and I just had the urge to make something because <laughs> it's been a few weeks just before Christmas and, uh, and if I don't like make something I feel like I have a uh, uh, it must be an addiction, I guess. I don't know what it is, but I have to create something. Cleaning a studio is a pain in the neck. You find things you forgot you had, and then you want to play with them. You want to start new projects, but I'm... Now, you see... You can put your rope, whoops, you can put your rope here and see how much, see I can still trim more off here. So you'll, you can see that you can trim it really, really, really close. The zigzag would catch it anyway. I'm going to trim some more off here. I'm trying to rush this so your video isn't so long because not that much fun watching people do this kind of stuff. This is not really a tutorial. This is just a how-to, how I do things. There are lots of tutorials on, on YouTube on how to zigzag your bowl and all kinds of great information. That Crafty Patty is one of the best, in my opinion. Okay, so we'll see how this is gonna work out. Move everything out of the way here. Let's see, we can have, mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna have a, about a nine inch base on this bowl. probably take the whole uh, yank of uh, of the rope. Oops, I got a little tangled here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. I'm using a vintage sewing machine, a vintage Kenmore, 1976. Um, I like these vintage machines. I especially like Kenmore's. Of this time of this time period they they are all metal and they uh, have larger motors at least the one amp uh, as compared to today's machines and uh, the thing about the older machines is you have to oil them and clean them uh, if you do that they will last forever they are really great machines and you can do it yourself there's no you can take these apart because they're mechanical and, and do all the, clean, you know, major cleaning. So sounds like an ad for <laughs> Kenmore sewing machine. So I rescue these machines and uh, people like to throw them away and such. And uh, so I have like a whole little setup in my dining room because we don't use the dining room much except for the holidays. And um, and I have them out there. I have Rocketeers and Kenmore's and Singer Touch and Sews. So it's fun to play with them. Not for everyone, but for, for my husband and I, we do like it. Okay, so I have my machine set on a five for the width. You can do four or five. You have to see how your machine, what you want to do. And uh, I have the uh, length set at about a 10. If I don't like it, I can change it. And uh, just put, put the disc under your presser foot and 
Here we go. I'm using a variegated thread for this. So, and as you're sewing this, you know, press your fabric back to the edge. Because sometimes it has a tendency to bubble up a little. Okay, where's my presser for? There we go. So, let's see. Can we see in this video? Can we see everything? Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Okay, machine. Do your thing, baby. See how nice it sounds? So what you're going to do is just zigzag. Of course, I just missed that part. So what I do is I just lift it up and go back. See what I did there? It's because I'm trying to look over this camera. No big deal. There's hardly a mistake you can make on these on these rope bowls. I think that's why they're so popular. Anyway, I don't believe in mistakes. I believe in learning experiences. Uh, this is how I do it. I'm not going to make the whole bowl because uh, that would be way too long. Just want you to get the idea that you can take any kind of uh, make memory bowls and make from any of the old uh, needlework that maybe family members have done or you rescued and just think they're pretty. They're, they, they make very pretty bowls. And each one is unique. It's no two the same, which is really nice. So you, so you get the idea... finish this off and then I'll check it out and see if I'm happy with this base you can actually go around a second time if you wish like this just to make sure it's all caught in the thread. I see I missed a couple little places there, so I'm glad I went around a second time. Just lift it up and swing it back around. And you're back on track here. So at this point, on this particular bowl. I'm going to start raising it up to form a bowl. Now I like my bowls a little straight so I push my um, base up as far as I can onto the nose of the machine. Like this. really is just a lot of practice. Everybody has their own t technique. I'm going to stop here. And uh, the more you do, the more you'll find your best way of doing these bowls. So, so that's the, whoops, that's the base. It's going to be so pretty, and uh, and this is going to be what I'm going to wrap a few as I go around. I kind of decide and uh, to how much to wrap. I don't want to wrap the whole thing, uh, but I will um, probably show you when I'm done. I'll make a little quickie video so we can see the finished finished one. So you just make your bowl. So
I hope this uh, was informative for people. Thank you for watching. See you next time.